بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد so we have here أفعال الظن moving on to أفعال الظن عفوا كمبيتر أفعال يقين so في كريكا we have الباب الأول إذن فعل we have قياسي لازم متعدي متعدي لام مفعولين أنا إن فعل جاري so really ideally we can say this is this is جاريها extends all the way over here really the جاريها extends is all جاريها Yes? Fahim? And then fa'alu qalb adhiz. Yaqeen and dhan. So we finished yaqeen yesterday. And this is where we are right now. Fa'alu dhan. And then we have al-muta'adiyya la. Thalathi mafa'il. This is also fa'alu qalb. Yes? Okay? And then we have the sama'i. So al-thani, the second type of fa'alu muta'adiyya la maf'oolayn, where the asal is mubtala and khabar, is those which were dhan. These are also called af'alu rujhaan. Rujhaan means like dominant or higher level. So we basically have Rujhan is that one like a scale and a scale one is one is higher than the other. We're here, what is this? Dhanna. So the first is Dhanna. Right? Now, for example, Alladhini Yadunnuna. Yes? Annahum walaqu rabbihim wa annahum ilayhi rajiun. Yes? So now you have here Dhanna Yadunnu the fa'lu qalb and the ism al-masdar or ma ba'du is what? Saadatum sadda al-maf'ulayn. The ism al-awwal is Saadatul Masadil Maf'ulayn that came before previously, yes? Acha. Now, what you have to understand in the Qur'an, again, these are rules of thumb. They don't apply everywhere, but a rule of thumb. In the Qur'an, many places, the word dhanna is used in the meaning of to know something. Like it's very verse. Alladhini yadhunnuna. So Allah is praising those people who do dhan. What's their dhan? That they are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa annahum ilayhi rajiun. And that they are going to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you look at it, you can't just think like Zan means Rujhan, like probably. You can't say, oh, probably there's resurrection. You can't believe that. Yaqeen means I have full belief that there's resurrection. I believe that I will be resurrected from my grave and Allah will call me forth to the mahshar and I have to give his and kitab of my a'mal. You have to have Yaqeen. If not, it's a shak. It's like maybe it's agnostic. That doesn't count. So why is it Yadunnuna here? So to understand this is that the word Zanna can be used in the matter of Alima. But then, well, obviously, then, if dhanna means alima, why not use alima? So what we say here, there are two types of ilm, as a rule of thumb, there are two types of ilm. One is called ilm al-badihi, what's called ilm nadari. What's ilm badihi? Ilm badihi is that, it is very obvious, you don't have to even think about it. It's just, bam, in front of you. Like, you just know it straight away. One and one is two, two and two is four. And depending on how good you are in mass, the badihi then stops at a certain level, isn't it? It's very obvious in front of you, correct? It's called badihi. Like, you just look at it, you see the signs, the alamat, and you know straight away. It's day, like it's ilm badi. I know it's the day because it sun's out. I don't have to check the clock. I don't have to go and figure out anything. Yes, and if you're locked in a cell, underground, then you have to do, like, think. What time is it? It's this time. It's this month. So in November at four o'clock in the evening, is it going to be day? Is it going to be night? If it's June, if it's July, it'll be day. If it's, you have to work out a bit more, so that's called nadari. You're actually trying to reduce, reduce something. Are you following? So this is why in the Ashura Rahmatullah it says many times, so you have Ilm al-Badihi and Ilm al-Nadri. And many times, you, when you have Ilm al-Nadri, like something you have, to, you believe in it 100%. Like for example, the square root of 144 is 12, I think, hopefully, I'm not wrong. Yes? You have to come to, you have to work it out. You believe in it, but you have to work it out. So sometimes the things that you have to come to a conclusion, figure out, work out, usually the Nayadunnu. So it's Tidlal. Yeah, so things that you have to do is the of trying to figure out, come to, that you have to think there's one, there has to be a khaliq. And the khaliq sent a messenger. And that messenger propagated a message. And that message that he will be resurrected. And you come to the conclusion is true. That you have full faith in this. Is it idhunnun annuhum mulaqu rabbihim? Are you following? So those who believe, that's what Imam al ghaib isn't it? It's not, they know, it's not like, oh, I believe that this, this I believe that, this, that I have iman that the, the, the board is on. Because that's not belief, that's seeing. And the hereafter is not Imam al ghaib you're actually seeing the malaika, you're seeing your hisab, you're seeing kitab, you're seeing hashar. That's not Iman, that's ru'ya, that's ilm. So sometimes you do ta'abir of dhanna, you say the word dhanna, what do you mean? What's meant? That what? You know, but you've come to the conclusion. Fahim. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the very same structure, annahum mulaqu rabbihim, if you look in other places, i'lamu, uh, annahum, the word alima comes. So when Allah is telling the believers, he's saying, no, with certainty. So Allah is saying that when, when Allah is telling the believers this is those who, that you need to believe fully. So Allah says, 
I'm not going to the exact verses, but there's Alima. Because Allah is telling you, you have to know a certainty. And I think the believers, they come to this conclusion that, they, that Allah has informed them. So via that the Rasul, Rasul is true, the Rasul is sadiq, the Quran is sadiq, they come to the conclusion, the Messenger of the Quran is true. So the word Zanna is often used in places where it is. It means Alima, to know for certainty, but uh, it's via Istilal. That's a general rule of thumb. Not all places, but you have to then adjust it. For example, Ma'alamu annakum walaku. But I say, no, no, I don't, not just think, but I think, no, because I am telling you. So when I'm telling you, I'm telling you a certain fact, annakum walaku. You have to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now Allah is saying, I'lamu, fa'lu qalb. This is Sadat Muslim of Ulain. But in here, it's expressed by Alima. Not dhannu, or dhunnu. He's saying, I'lamu. You understand? And then, in this one, he's saying, I don't know what I'm saying. Because why? Not that they have a slight thought. Are you funny? So Allah is saying, I am informing you, so therefore you should know with certainty that you are going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the believers accept this message and they come to conclude this is the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via the Rasul. So therefore, they conclude, they come to this conclusion, do istilal, and they come to know. Fahim? Hadikum Allah, Yusri wa ba'alakum. Understood? Acha. Now we've got another rule of thumb. Is that the word alima is for yaqeen and the word zanna can be also used for if it wavers between yaqeen and rujhan now these can come in each of these can come in zanna and alima both can come in three ways each but can they come in three ways each okay and each of these have a tafawut different darajat different levels of yaqeen and this is a rule of thumb to understand the different darajat and remember the principle is ziyaratul lafzi tadullu ala ziyaratil ma'na. The more wording you have, the more meaning, the more intense the meaning is going to be. Are you following? So look at the first one. So the, the general rule of thumb is as follows. Yes? If you have alima with anna, because anna is shadda. What does this show? It generally shows or it is generally used where you want to show the highest level of yaqeen. Let's say for example. This is mine. This is my tasbih ring. Yes? Are you following? This is mine. I don't have to, because I, I don't have any doubt in this. I don't have any doubt. But I don't have to say each time, Wallahi, I swear to God, this is mine. It's like, okay, all right, I believe you. There's no doubt. But if you say this is mine, then I'm going to say, no, what are you about? This is mine. Wallahi, this is mine. So even though I'm showing both circumstances, there's a different, there's a reason why I will bring Wallahi some places, Wallahi in other places. So even though you have Ali, you might have certainly in all places, there may be a reason to express it more ta'kid. Because of the context, and this is any balagha. Are you following? Example of this is like Fa'alam. Allah is saying here, Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. So in this context, Allah is saying, So in Alam, know with certainty, because I am informing you, and annahu. Yes? Acha. And even his Zamiru Sha'an, so creates even more emphasis. The next level is Alima, but you have an. Because anna is shadda, and an is mukhaffafa. So less. Loves less ma'na, less shidda. Alima an sayakunu minkum marva. So Allah is talking here, Alima annahu, annahu sayakunu minkum marva. No. Allah is saying that Allah knows that there will be sick people amongst you. Now Allah knows yaqeen, isn't it? But if you look at the whole verse, in this whole verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's he referring to? What's he talking about? He's talking about the fact that they performed tahajjud and then it was difficult, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then created ease for you. You follow me? So Allah says, He could have said, if Allah wanted to do it, he said, Alima, Annakum, the Anna, Alima, Annakum, Sayakunu, Minkum, Sayakunu, Ya Annakum, Satakunu, Namarda, Ya Satakunu, Ba'dakum, Marda. It's definitely the structuring, isn't it? But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows that you're going to become sick. Some of you will be sick. But the whole eye is based upon, it's like, Wallah, you know what, you're going to die. It's like, okay, thanks very much for that. The first thing, you know, you're ill. You know, inshallah, Allah will give you a life. And I know you're dead. I'm not going to die anyways. There's no point in putting on it. Because I'm trying to be kind to you. And if I'm being evil to you, I say, one day you're going to die. So both the same thing, isn't it? But I'm putting taqid one day because I'm trying to show like harshness. And one day I can, even though I have yaqeen both ways, you're going to die one day. You're not going to live after past 200 years, are you? In 200 years time, you're going to be dead, definitely. I'm not saying 100, you might live to 100. In 200 years time, probably, you're definitely die, aren't you? But it depends on I want to bring taqid on that or not. Sometimes. So Allah knows you become sick. But Allah is talking about takhfif. Allah is making it easy for you. Allah knows that it's difficult for you. Allah is making it. So Allah knows that you're sick, but He's trying to mention it in a without ta'kid. So He says, "Alima ansa yakunu min kum marda." You understand? So not trying to emphasize the fact that you're gonna become sick. So even though Allah knows for certainty, this is one of the reasons it's used. Alima ansa yakunu. Alima anna kum 
تكونوا يكونوا بعضكم مرضى اقسم لا and the least form of ta'kir is what with uh without any use maful without anna anna i like example here in this verse fa in alimtumuhunna mu'minat so alima alimtum fa'il fa'il hunna maful bihi awwal mu'minat maful bihi thani like this is this is next level ajib quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in the surah hudaybiyah in hudaybiyah in hudaybiyah in hudaybiyah uh, there was a treaty that any man who comes from Mecca must be returned back to from Mecca to Medina. The Muslim must return back to Mecca. Yes, and if somebody from Medina leaves Islam and goes to Mecca, the, Muslim, the people of Mecca won't return him. Prophet said, "Okay, no problem. I'm confident nobody will leave Medina because they all like Islam. And you're worried about people leave Mecca because you're worried about people become Muslim. So you yourself have acknowledged that you're in trouble. No? Yes. So, so that's what happens. You know, when you say." Ban these people from from ban these people from propagating the message, or don't let these people post on social media. That means that you worry about these people, no? So when you ban somebody, that's a, a, a worry that you're worried about the truth. If somebody so obvious, if I say, you know what? I make a social media. One plus one equals four. That's a, that's my that's my that's my, I, I, my that's my logic. When I get banned from when I get banned, it's like it's so obvious what you're saying is false. Nobody even says this. We don't get any attention. But if you have something that's true, then people are worried about that. So the prophet says, I'm not worried. Let the people, let whoever leaves Mac, 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 Mecca and Medina goes to Mecca, um, you can go back. But the people have got this condition. Prophet said, okay, I like the condition. But no women mentioned this condition. No women were mentioned. So when the women came, the, the people of Mecca said, well, return them back. Prophet said, no, it's not mentioned in the treaty. But women. So then Allah said, فَإِنْ أَلِمْتُمُوهُنَّ مُؤْمِنًا So Alima means you have to know with certainty. But it didn't have to say, فَإِنْ أَلِمْتُمْ أَنَّهُنَّ مُؤْمِنًا why? What does this mean? If they come to you, just do a basic, you don't have to say, well, like, go to the depths of the, you, you can't open the hearts of the believers, are they? These women. Just, if you ask the, the right questions, they give you the right answers, they prove to you that the Muslims, that's it. Bas. Do not send them back to Makkah Mukarramah. So now there's not no ta'kid. You don't have to do ta'kid of the iman. Just, you know, and you have your heart fine. So let's use it with the way structure, the least emphatic structure. If you know that they believe us, the women come to you and you have enough, you ask them and you come to the conclusion that they're Muslims, fine, don't send them back. You don't have to open up their hearts and ask them, like, like literally, like, try to go so deep. Just ask them the basic, basic questions, the you believe us, don't send them back to the Makkah Mukarramah. So now you have less taqid in here. Same thing with dhanna now. Now going downwards now, dhanna. What's the most important thing? Now you have dhanna anna. Now if you look at these examples, again, yadunnun anna malaku rabi. Why is this? Taqid. That they are sure, and how they come to surety? Because of the, they come to conclusion, Allah exists, Allah said in Nabi, Nabi's message is true, and the Nabi says it to us, so we believe this. You follow him? Let's say, for example, a person didn't have any Nabi come to him. He can conclude there's one God, isn't he? That there must be a creator. But he can't conclude there's Jannah and Jahannam, because like, you have to be told about Jannah and Jahannam. You have to be told about resurrection. So that, that's something he had to conclude. He, so he had to conclude, Allah exists, Allah said Nabi, Nabi told us this, and I believe in this. So you don't know what But it, it's certainty. We come to the conclusion of certainty. Like this verse now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about um, the Banu Nadir. So Banu Nadir were a tribe in Medina Munawwara, a Jewish tribe in Medina Munawwara, and they had forts and they were very strong, firmly established. But they had a monopoly on the finances in Medina Munawwara and they betrayed uh, the treaties and they, uh, all, lots of stuff, stuff happened. So then they were eventually expelled from Medina Munawwara and it's only history books. Okay? So now the Prophet Allah is addressing the Ansar. So Allah says we're going to, again, the word Zanna is used here. The word Zanna is used here. Who's the file in here? Antum al Ansar. And the Mu'mineen. And who's the Zannu? Here, the Banu Nazir. Now, in one of them, Allah says, Ma Zanantum. Which is more emphatic. So we're saying, Ansar. Forget the ma. Zanantum an yakhruju. To think that they will leave. You had that. Maybe like, you know, they're oppressing us, they're doing wrong to us, they have monopoly. So you had that thought, but it, you didn't even think that. You didn't even have that thought. A light, that slight thought that they will leave, you didn't have that. You never thought that. They're so well established here. They have their forts and they have all of these things. They're never going to leave. But you never even thought that. Yes? 
And regarding, uh, regarding them themselves, what do they say? وَظَنُّوا They themselves thought what? ظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ With what? Ta'keed. They themselves thought أَنَّهُمْ not, not only أَنَّ خُسُونَهُمْ مَانِئَتَهُمْ What they thought? أَنَّهُمْ مَانِئَتُهُمْ خُسُونَهُمْ So you have, instead of saying أَنَّ خُسُونَهُمْ مَانِئَتُهُمْ You have أَنَّهُمْ مَانِئَتُهُمْ This is the fa'il of مَانِئَ This is uh, ismul fa'il See how much ta'keed it is? So they thought, they came to say, we are never ever going to have the leaf. And they thought that our force would protect from everything. So this, this thought that they had was much firmer. So Allah said, ظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ And then, مَا نِيَتُمْ حُسُونُهُمْ And regarding the answer, Allah said, you, didn't, you, you couldn't comprehend that's ever going to happen. فَمَا ظَنَنْتُمْ أَنْ يَخْرَجُوا You didn't think that they would leave. Are you following? You see the difference in the ta'kid? And the third example we have here is, the lowest level of dhanna is, we have two mafuls. When the person wants to be, he's saying, I don't believe in Qiyamah. What do you say? I think the Sa'a will establish. Is there any ta'keen in this? Is there any anna? Any an? A Sa'at al-Qa'imah? I don't believe in the Sa'a. I don't believe in the hereafter resurrection. I don't believe in all. So ma adhunnu Sa'at al-Qa'imah. So there's less ta'keed. There's a rule of thumb, and a certain place it will change to highlight one point, to denote one point, to emphasize one point. But it's a rule of thumb regarding the Af'alu Rujhan and how they are used, Af'alu Qalb and Af'alu Rujhan, how they are used. Understood? Acha. Hasiba. Hasiba, again, what's the rule as of Hasiba? Hisab. What's Hisab mean? Fahasabna Hisab and Yasira Allah. Grant us an easy Hisab. Allah grant us it. Hisab means to calculate, formulate, count. Yahsabu anna malo, you say Yahsabu. So, Yahsabu al Qalbi. So, the Hasiba Yahsabu is the fellow Qalb as well, isn't it? But it's originally made from the Hasiba Hissi. And Hasiba Hissi is made from Hisab. Hisab means calculation. Yes? So now, what they say regarding Yasabu is more of a calculation. Not just a thought, but you calculate something based on the Muraq. You look at everything and you calculate it. So a bit like Zanna, but I can't really, that's honest, I can't really, I can't really, I can see it, but I can't really pinpoint and explain to the total difference between Zanna and Hasiba. Zanna is more mental, Alima is more mental, and Hasiba is to do with like alamat and signs, etc. So he says here, وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ And they look at everything, they look at their books and their Torahs and their actions, they say, we are guided. وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُحْتَدُونَ Yes, so again, I did a bit more work on this and you can look it up more. But Hasiba is made from the, uh, Hasiba al-Qalbi is made from Hasiba al-Hissi. And Hasiba al-Hissi is to do refer, refer to what? Hisab, calculations. Do you understand? Za'ama is also fa'al al-Qalb. But Za'ama is usually using batil. So Za'ama is always used with anna and an. It never has what? Uh, it doesn't come with two, two mafuls. It always comes with anna and anna. Correct? Yes? Yes? And it's usually used in batil. The za'am, the thing that you're thinking, is always batil in the Quran. So za'am al ladni kafaru an la It's like a, to think, but think in a way which you are wrong. So za'am al ladni kafaru an la Those who disbelieve, what do they think? La yub'athu. They will never be resurrected. Fahim? The word ja'ala can also be a fa'lul qalb, meaning to assume somebody. Yes? So it can, so it can, make, it can be mean to make something. That will be fa'lul tahtasir, coming up later on. Tahwil, to make one thing to another. But here it means ja'alul malaika, they made the malaika. Let's do anything. Al malaika, they made the malaika who are Allah's servants in Athar. They didn't make them and create them, did they? What did it mean? They assumed them to be. Yes? You made, you made him into your God. You didn't make him into your God, you took him as your God. You made him your idol, meaning you took you, you didn't make him into your idol, you like thought of him to be your idol and your aspiration and your role model. So Ja'ala can also mean in the meaning of what? But the majority of the time it's to do with what? Tahwil, to change one thing to another. So Ja'ala can mean to create something, or it can mean to create meaning to make one thing into another state. And then these are some, these are some other of al Qulub, they don't come that often in the Quran. Haja, it doesn't come, it doesn't come all in the Quran. Adda, Khala, wa Wahaba. So for example, they come here, Hab Annaka, Hab Anna. Imagine, hab is anna. Khala is to think, to, and adda is to count, haja. I've never seen haja used, but it comes in the book that's mentioned it here. So these are af'alur, yaqeen. Understood? Yes? Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaykum.